All right, in this video, we're going to go through how to set up a setup library. We're going to talk about the reasons why we need to set the library up and, and then just the specifics about each item, why we have to set it up that way. So basically, the setup library is our first line of defense against ourselves. Uh, if you'll set your setup library up properly, it will help you to avoid uh, auditing and including measures that are not allowable measures. So the whole goal has been to go through the setup library and turn everything off that is not an allowable energy conservation measure. Now there are some measures in the setup, you know, listed in, as a default in the setup library that are allowable under other circumstances or using other funding sources, but if they're not an allowable energy conservation measure in ECM, then we want to shut them off and and then we'll use our own knowledge and understanding of the program to uh, include those measures in other in other ways so that we're not evaluating them for energy savings when they're not allowed. So let's get started. Uh, in order to set up your setup library or to make any changes to it, uh, you start here on the weatherization assistance screen and you just click on the setup library button. Uh, now when you in your when you're in your setup library, note that you can create multiple setup libraries. Uh, most of you should not be doing this, uh, but if you ever need to create one, you know, for testing purposes or whatever, you can do that. Just be aware of what setup library you're in. Within my uh, library, I've created a couple of different setup libraries. I'm using an example of uh, UNA Basins now, but if I wanted to change to one of my other setup libraries, I would just scroll through them down here uh, using the scroll buttons. So make sure that you're in the in the proper setup library. Uh, if you are stopping, you know, if you're drawing a line in the sand and you're going to change the way that your setup library uh, runs from one point to another then you may have a date associated with that. You know, you may say, here's our setup library from 2014. Now this is a new one for 2015. That might help you keep things straight. And if you ever had to go back and recreate an audit, then you'd have your old setup library saved. So, so maybe a recommendation uh, for this would be to create a brand new setup library. And when, you're up, when it's all set up and you're ready to start implementing it, then begin selecting that when you're creating audits. So, so grab the right setup library, make sure you've got the right agency selected. You can create multiple agencies and you can also create multiple supply libraries. And I'm not sure if this one is a big deal, but I would recommend that you make sure and select the appropriate supply library uh, as well. Now, the area that you'll spend a lot of time in is going to be your library measures. So if you click on that library measures tab, um, this is really where you need to start setting up your library measures. This is where you're going to turn on or off or make active or inactive any measures. Um, over here on the left-hand side of the screen, I have our current list of allowable measures. And uh, this is available online. You should, it should look very similar to this. If there are any changes in the future, then obviously those changes would supersede whatever is mentioned here in this video. I did uh, show my whole screen so you can see that today's date is the 16th, or sorry, the 17th of June for 2015. So any changes that happen after this, please implement them accordingly. Um, so let's get started. Basically, what I would recommend that you do is before you before you start clicking on costs or anything else, is uh, go through this list and make sure that it looks just like this list. So in this instance, you start scrolling down this column and make sure that everything over here is active just like this. Now you'll note that uh, there's a column for the NEAT and there's a column for the MIA. And you may notice that I'm, I'm looking at the NEAT stuff and it doesn't quite align with what's on this screen. That's because I'm currently only viewing the MIA measures. So click this drop down and select your NEAT measures and then just go down the list and make sure everything is the same. All I 
All I've done is gone down here, everything should be active until I get down to measure number eight, which is white roof coating. This is not an allowable measure, so it should be shut off. Uh, also, you'll note that on measure number seven, I have this item uh, listed as 999 and 99 cents. And what that is, if you go into measure seven and select the costs, you'll see that the very first option up there is fiberglass bats R19 and the measure is for sill box insulation. Our field guides say do not use fiberglass bats for sill box insulation because they don't do any air sealing. So what uh, you need to do there is you need to go in and basically make it inactive. Now you don't want to make the whole measure inactive because we we still want to evaluate for sill box insulation, we just need to do it with other types of insulation. In another video, we'll come back in and we'll set the pricing for some two-part foam and things like that, so that when the system evaluates for those, you know, it it's going to look at that and say, well, at a dollar twenty-five or something like that, you know, is that a uh, cost-effective measure to do based on the information that the auditor put in the system? But in this case, we'll leave this one always at $9.99. And then that way, when it looks at it, at fiberglass bats, it's going to say, well, that's not very cost effective. And it will go on to the next option, which would be two-part foam or rigid foam. So uh, just a little more on that. Let me. I'm going to click on the neat insulation types. And you'll see that on the seal box, this item here in the in the with the box around it, these are default settings and there's no way to change them. So the basically the, the people that built the weatherization assistant, they put fiberglass bats in as a default setting. We can't turn it off. And so that's why you're just gonna price it up above or price it higher than everything else so that it'll never evaluate for it. We'll probably come back to this tab in another video. Uh, this is just a list of all of the insulation types and you can kind of see some of them show up here and we've given some information about whether they should be active or inactive. Um, but we'll talk about that later. Let me go back to the library measures. So just keep going down the list and making sure that all of the measures that should not be active are turned off. Uh, and, I, and I'll just quickly talk about all of the measures that are turned off. So storm windows, just not an allowable measure within our weatherization program. Uh, what, the window replacement, um, whenever you're evaluating to replace a window, the system has two options. It has window replacement or a low E window replacement. Since we only allow low E windows, uh, this is not an allowable measure. So turn this one off. That way, whenever you're evaluating, it will only look at whether or not a low E window would be cost effective. We don't do any... Um, window shading or sunscreen fabrics, sunscreens louvered. We used to do window film. If somebody wants to make a case for it, we can look at it. But for right now, we're going to turn that off. Thermal vent damper, electric vent damper, IIDs, uh, flame retention burners, all those things should be shut off. They're not allowable within our program. A furnace tune-up. Now this is one when you when you come into the cost on this, be aware that, well, be aware of a couple things. Be aware that a furnace tune-up has an effective life of only three years. And that when you're doing a furnace tune-up, you're only allowed to do things that save energy. If there's a part that's broken on there and you cannot draw a connection between replacing that part and saving energy, that's not allowable as part of a tune-up. A tune-up is really just to clean a few things, switch out filters, make sure that that furnace is running at you know optimal levels so that it is consuming the least amount of energy. Uh, another thing to note for furnace tune-ups is that leaving multiple um, furnace filters is an allowable ancillary item to a furnace tune-up. If you look in the guidelines, that's something you can do, but you can only do it as a furnace tune-up. You should not be adding that in as a, as a user-defined measure or an additional measure 
Um, if you're going to do that, make sure you're doing that here. But but so that sorry that was a little bit of sidetrack. Watch your furnace tune-up costs. Basically, in order to have a furnace tune-up pay for itself in a three-year period, the cost has to be pretty low. In fact, I would I would bet that at $125, it will rarely pay back as an energy conservation measure. Uh, but you know, put an accurate cost in there, but think about what it is you're doing as part of that tune-up and make sure you're limiting it to just energy conservation things. Um, now if you have other funding sources such as Questar or crisis funds, that would allow you to do furnace tune-ups, but you're going to do them as a non-audited measure and you'll enter them in, you'll enter your non-audited measures under user-defined measures, not, not here in, in the library measures. So. Anyway, so that's a little information on how to set that furnace tune-up up and make sure your costs are reasonable. But also note that it's not going to it's not going to pay back as an energy conservation measure too often. Uh, replacing the heating system compared to a high efficiency furnace or boiler. This is kind of the same thing as the window versus the low E window. Uh, we do not allow you to replace the heating system with anything below a 95 percent efficient furnace so this needs to be shut off now you'll you'll find that when you're um, when you're in the audit and you're looking at the inputs on that the system's going to force you to put in some information about an 80 percent efficient furnace in fact let me go there now okay so if you're on the heating tab you you do have to select evaluate all and when you do that it's going to force you to put information in here under the standard and then also under a high efficiency uh, unfortunately you just have to do that but where you're switching the uh, switching this measure off to replace the heating system even though you've put the information in here it's not even going to evaluate for it it's only going to look at that high efficiency furnace so so shut that replace heating system off. Um, the replace the AC, there are no provisions within our program that would allow you to replace an air conditioner as an energy conservation measure. You can do it with crisis under certain circumstances. Uh, you can do it as an incidental repair to a high efficiency furnace. If you have to install the furnace then you would enter your air conditioner as an incidental repair that goes against cumulative SIR but you don't have to include that as part of the cost of the high efficiency furnace so your chances of being able to swap that out will be greater but either way that needs to be turned off and same thing goes for the evaporative cooler there's just no provisions that allow us to do that as an energy conservation measure um, and then the last thing there is water heater replacement. Not allowed as an energy conservation measure and there's only a couple of rare instances that it would even be allowed with other funding sources so be very careful on that one. So once you've gone through this list then the other thing you need to do uh, by default these the life of all of these should reflect this list. It should be accurate but take a few minutes and run down that list and make sure that everything matches that you've got the life set properly and then switch over to your MIA measures and go through them the MIA are just further down the list of audit library measures and just go through that list and make sure everything matches up again I'll quickly go through uh, each one of these that are turned off and give some explanation as to why they're turned off in case you're wondering. Um, one of the main things on the the MIA is it has a provision for an addition. So you may have a mobile home and then kind of built onto the mobile home you've got an extra room or an extra half of a house or whatever you may run into and this allows you to kind of audit the mobile home part or the modular home or whatever separate from the addition 
and so you can kind of account for each separately. Um, everything that's associated with the addition, we are asking you to turn that off. And the reason why we would like it off is that within the program, we have set the requirements that you use the NEAT anytime you come to a a mobile home, a modular home uh, that has that has some sort of site built addition attached to it. So now one of the things that are kind of the rule of thumb on that is that that addition has to be finished space. So if you come and you've got a modular home and that was set on a crawl space, then you use the Mia. But if that modular home was set on top of a basement and that basement is you know finished livable space, then you should be using the NEAT to audit that. So basically anytime a home has an addition, you should be using the NEAT, so turn it off in the MIA. And that's that's kind of every other measure for a good portion of this list. So that's why those are shut off. Um, floor loose uh, floor cellulose loose insulation. Uh, I, we are asking you to turn off all of the cellulose that could be exposed to moisture because the cellulose holds the moisture in. We really should not be using it as a belly insulation. So on a mobile home, uh, don't use that. Shut that off. Um, fiberglass is great because it will dry. It will drain out and dry. So that's what you should be using there. Um, the roof cellulose. This one's kind of similar, but on a mobile home, it's really just a, an issue of weight. I'm not aware of any agency that's using this in an attic on a mobile home. They should be using fiberglass because it's lighter. Um, trailer skirting is not an allowable energy conservation measure, so shut that off here. Uh, there's a few rare instances where you can actually add that on, um, but you've got to follow the guidelines on that. But here, shut it off. White roof coating, it's a waste of time and money. Turn it off. Um, replace marked doors, replaced wooden doors, and storm doors. All of these things, uh, our guidelines have listed them as they're not energy conservation measures. And so we don't list them here. Now you can replace them as a part of air infiltration. Um, so they're kind of a subset or they're ancillary to air infiltration, but as a standalone measure, you should not be looking at them to replace them. So shut all of those off and anytime you need to swap out a door, either add it to your air infiltration costs or you can also, I think, you know, consult our guidelines and see if you can use other funding sources to replace them if you need to. Uh, window ceiling in, in addition, same thing, just addition issues here. Plastic storm windows, um, they, you know, obviously they've got a short lifespan here, but I, to me, I don't even think it's worth putting them in. I think most people remove them the first year, and so we'd like to ask the program to stop using plastic storm windows across the board. Uh, glass storm windows, we just don't, we don't pay for them, we don't allow them, especially not on a mobile home. Um, awnings, shade, uh, some of those same issues as, as on uh, site-built homes, we just don't do that as energy conservation measures in our program. So turn them off. Evaporative cooling, same thing, there's no energy conservation measure that allows you to replace a swamp cooler. You may be able to do it using other funding sources. Uh, tuning the cooling system, that one is shut off uh, on a mobile home. I think it's allowable on a on a uh, site built home. Yeah, it is allowable on a site built home, but it's not allowable on a mobile home. So shut that off. Um, replacing the DX cooling equipment, shut that one off. And then same thing on water heater. That one's not an allowable measure. So shut that one off as well. 
uh, as as you're working through all of these things if you ever come across this measure or some other measure that that you feel there's a significant energy savings and it would be worthwhile you know you're always welcome to bring that up share it with your coordinator and we can discuss it and from time to time we may switch on or off some of these other measures based on what we're finding within the program now also please note that there is a an additional measure listed both under the MIA and the NEAT and that's an ECM motor. You can see it here on this list and I think it's on the yeah it's the last item oh no I just I think I just listed it down here for both and it's just active for both NEAT and MIA. What you need to do there is that is the only measure within our program that is an energy conservation measure not to be confused with its acronym of an ECM um, but the energy conservation because it's an energy conservation measure and there's nowhere to put it in here you've got to add that in as a user defined measure and let me see if I can find one okay well let, let's create one of these uh, for the ECM motor real quick um, so to do that click on the user defined measures and you'll see your user defined measures by default it's going to have 50 of these health and safety measures um, but what you want to do is actually create a new measure in here so click new and you can give it a measure number if you want but you want to make sure that it's active you want to include it in the SIR because anytime you select this measure because it's an energy conservation measure um, it has to be it has to have an SIR and by default these say no energy savings this is pretty much the only time you're gonna select estimated and and then you've got to fill out this information you're gonna estimate the amount of energy saved by conducting this measure so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do kilowatt hours and you can put in 400 kilowatt hours for our standard savings on that. Now if you ever come across it and you want to calculate that more accurately because you feel like it will pay back and 400 hours is not paying back, you're welcome to document the calculation, show how you calculated it and add that to the client file. Um, and then you've got to identify the type of fuel that has been saved by doing this uh, ECM and in this case it's going to be electricity because it's an electric motor and then the life of the measure is a uh, it's a 15 year life so add that in there you know, based on what we've written down here 15 year life and then make sure that it's active for both the site built and the mobile homes and give that measure a name in this case, I named this one, you know, the full name, the electronically commutated motor, uh, so that I don't get it too confused with the, the naming convention for an ECM, which is a energy conservation measure. Uh, and then if you want to, you can identify it as, you know, the measure type as an HVAC systems. Uh, it kind of depends on if you're using that feature within the audit. And then what you want to do is you want to identify the an estimated cost of the materials and the labor to install an, an ECM motor. So to do that, just select down here and from your drop down, you, you may have something listed in uh, your you know materials and hardware. If you don't, you can add it here. If you do, you can select it from the drop down. This is telling me I haven't created anything. There's nothing in that drop down. So um, I'll just quickly uh, add one of those. I'll add it to my supply library so that when we drop that down, we can we can find it. So go to the supply library, click on construction materials hardware. Let's uh, call it. Uh, ECM motor and we'll just say each unit typically costs now on, on this um, so say your motor normally costs $261 uh, 
you can either put that exact amount in or you can also put in just an estimated cost and if you are estimating the cost I would recommend that you put it slightly higher than the actual cost that way when you compare your audited cost to the actual cost at the end your audited cost will come in a little higher and then you will have not ever gone over your audited cost so let's just say 265 on this one for the cost of that motor and once that's in here I'm gonna hit close and then sometimes it takes a, a time or two to refresh but you should be able to click that drop down menu and select your ECM motor and it's just gonna put in the information that you entered in on in your supply library so it's showing we at one would cost two hundred sixty five dollars uh, now the other thing you need to set up in your supply library is going to be some labor um, so click on the labor tab and you may have different types of labor in your agency uh, we're just going to set up one type of labor we'll just call it labor but you may have HVAC labor uh, you know weatherization crew labor insulation crew labor and all those things could be slightly different but in this case we're going to just put in some labor we're going to put in uh, you know one hour it's, it's going to cost the agency after they pay for the uh, insurance and fringe and everything. It's going to cost the agency about $30 for that labor. Uh, it would be good for you to have kind of a standard rate that includes all of that um, or a couple of standard rates within your setup library so that you can more accurately estimate your, your costs on things. So uh, now that we have the labor set up, then I should be able to select labor from the drop down menu and when I select my options here I can select that labor and it's going to come up you know with the hour one the quantity of one and an hour of thirty now in this case I'm going to say an ECM motor actually normally takes about two hours so I'll change that and what it's essentially doing is it's going to say that the cost of installing an ECM motor is going to be two hundred sixty five dollars plus sixty dollars um, in labor and then anytime I select that measure it's going to evaluate and say hey would it be cost effective if we spent three hundred and twenty five dollars to put in an energy conservation or a, sorry a electronically communicated motor um, and it'll base it on saving 400 kilowatt hours per year I think it is and it'll determine whether or not that's cost effective measure so that's the only only energy conservation measure that you need to add to the system now the system's not going to automatically evaluate for it you do have to select it so when you're out auditing you gotta make sure anytime there's an opportunity you need to put this one on the, the audit and because you've included it in the SIR it will evaluate and tell you whether or not it has an SIR of one or greater so but that's that's basically all you've got to do to do your to put your setup library uh, for your library measures together. Now, in another video, we'll go through user-defined measures. There, there's probably going to be a short list of user-defined measures that we would recommend that everybody has. So we'll kind of re go through all of that. But, uh, but that's it for this one.